The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into Views from the Sideline. I'm your host, Joey Tysick, my partner, Malik Hill. And uh, NBA season is back. And that makes my wife very upset. <laughs> it's the best time of the year. <laughs> she always feels like there's no time in between seasons. And she feels like we just got over the NBA playoffs and stuff, which, you know. Listen, that... They say that they have their like three month span where barely anything is happening. Yeah, and they just don't take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. Although we did have uh, the FIBA World Cup this year, though, uh, so that changes things just just slightly. Um, but uh, it was interesting, and NBA season's already back. There's a lot of big storylines going into the season, and um, we had our first two games last night. We had Denver Nuggets getting their their championship rings. And then beaten down on the Lakers. And then the nightcap was the Phoenix, the new look Phoenix Suns taking down the new look uh Chris Paul Warriors. Did you did you get to watch the uh the games? Both of them are just I, one I watched the first game and then I fell asleep before the second one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the first game, the Nuggets they look like they really haven't lost much. They knocked off the rust very quickly. Mm-hmm. They Got right into looking like the team they were in the playoffs. Nikola Jokic obviously has not done much cardio in the offseason. He said he's been in the gym. Yeah, in the, he said he's been like in the weight room. Yeah. So he's been getting stronger, but he really hasn't shed. He he was pretty slim down yeah. during the playoffs, and it looks like he's packed on maybe like 20 more pounds. Right. But he's the same player. Mm-hmm. It's, it's incredible. First, Watching him. First game puts up a triple-double. Yeah. It the how easy he makes it look just doesn't make sense. Like yeah. Anthony Davis, one of the best athletes in the world, a bunch of skill at almost seven feet tall, mm-hmm. super athlete, and Nikola Jokic mm-hmm. just makes him look like another player. Yeah, when he's out there. And Anthony Davis, that was a a big talking point for the Lakers. Lakers had a couple of talking points actually. Anthony Davis scored seventeen points in the first half, zero in the second half. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. How do you have a superstar like Anthony Davis score zero in the second half? It doesn't make any sense, but we've seen it before. It's just which is sad. It's that, just wild. Yeah, I, I don't. These things happen it. with Anthony Davis, even when he's not hurt. Mm-hmm. He has these types of games. Yeah, and that that already doesn't bode well for the Lakers. I know it's game one, but to see the Nuggets just come out looking like the championship team all over again, no. Seemingly no rust right off the gate uh, is pretty cool to see. And they're going to be already one of the favorites once again to to possibly repeat, which would be pretty wild. Um, the other thing about the Lakers that a lot of people are pointing out, LeBron James only played 29 minutes. That's how it should be, honestly. Yeah. It, it is supposed to be at this point. Why LeBron brought Anthony Davis to the Lakers mm-hmm. is to eventually take over and be the guy. Yeah. So they can keep they can keep making runs and LeBron can stay fresh. Right. Yeah. You keep them healthy for the playoffs. I don't know why people are making a big deal out of it, especially with the new rules of not being able to uh, rest superstars um, in certain games and things like that. So I would assume a lot of guys are just going to start seeing reduced minutes. They're still gonna they're gonna play, but it's still not going to be like a full slate that we're used to, I guess. Um, so yeah, and and I mean the Lakers made a lot of offseason moves. They got Christian Wood and um, who else? Who else did they get? They got Gabe Vincent. They got yes. Torian Prince. Yeah, who I don't expect him to score eighteen a night. Yeah, he was on fire. He's a he's a really good shooter, mm-hmm. but I don't expect him to be that on on a nightly basis. Yeah, and so, it looks like it looks like they're already having problems with D'Angelo Russell. Listen, <laughs> early. He, most basketball fans agreed the Lakers had a really good offseason. Mm-hmm. On paper, they looked really good. 
on the court, they have a lot to figure out. Yeah. They still have a lot to figure out. Yeah. And then the nightcap, the Suns, like I said, took down the Warriors. Warriors were without Draymond Green. I don't know if that should have mattered, but it maybe did. And then the New Look Phoenix Suns, they looked pretty good, even with Kevin Durant struggling mightily. Yeah, and with yeah, Brad Beal out. Yeah. Devin Booker got off to a hot start yeah. from the jump. He mm-hmm. just, yeah. And it's kind of like I was thinking, Yusuf Nurkic, obviously he's got to stay healthy. But if he stays healthy, he is a bigger addition, I think, than people realize for that team. Listen, they, some people were shocked that Phoenix gave up on DeAndre Ayton mm-hmm. so quickly. It wasn't, isn't he six years in? He was the uh, first pick of like the 2019 draft, 18 or 19. So maybe this so is his be fifth like year. Five, yeah. Four, five. But with the way him and Monty Williams fell out, mm-hmm. the way he went into just like coast mode in the playoffs multiple times, yeah. He, the way he just wouldn't be aggressive at times. How do you trust him? Right. Even with him being so young. Mm-hmm. Now he says he's rejuvenated and has a lot of uh motivation mm-hmm. now that he's in Portland. Yeah. But I have to believe it to see it. Like, we know what Yusuf Nurkic can give you when he's fully healthy. He's going to attack the boards. Mm-hmm. He's going to give you some points, and he's going to play hard. Like, right. he, there's there's no doubt that he's going to play. He's going to give you everything he has. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then, like we said, there like their other additions that they made throughout the offseason, getting Grayson Allen, I know he put up a big nothing burger. Um, but he's going to be a pest on defense. Yeah. Josh Okogi outplayed Clay Thompson. Yeah, he played pretty much. He played really good. Yeah. I don't think he'll he'll stay that efficient. Um, Yuta Watanabe hit a few shots. Yep, he's going to be a good shooter for them. Drew Eubanks showed some uh, some defensive prowess. He had a big block uh, in the game. Uh, and then Eric Gordon struggled, but he played. He had a big minutes. three in the fourth. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like they, they made some, some solid upgrades, I think on that team. And then on the warrior side, they just looked kind of rusty. Yeah. Steph and Clay both struggled from three. Chris Paul really struggled from the field. He did good otherwise. Um, and then once again, like they didn't get a ton of bench production. Uh, Moses Moody and Kuminga did pretty solid, but other than that, there wasn't much there. Uh, Dario Saric threw a bunch of shots at the rim and, was not great. Not so, good when you have Dario Sarge shooting like eight or nine shots. Yeah, so the Warriors, they shot 35% from the field, 23 from three. Um, so that that's going to be a tough one either way. But they only lose by four, so I don't know what that says about the, the Warriors necessarily. Yeah. Um, tonight there's some big games. We got Celtics-Knicks on ESPN as well as Dallas is playing San Antonio, so we'll get First to see. First Wimby primetime game. Yeah, I think that's going to be the most watched game uh, for a while, just in general. And then, of course, our Pistons play tonight, taking on the Heat. Um, right, they're going to Miami, right? Yes. That's a, yeah, that's, that's a tough opener. Yeah, it's really tough. But it, it's exciting because it, it gives us right away an idea of where this team might be at. Um, yeah. Cade is looking healthy-ish. They do have a few guys out for the first month of the season, which is unfortunate. Yeah. The, Monte Morris, Isaiah Livers. Yeah. And who, who was the other? Boyan. Yeah, and Boyan. Yeah. Uh, so already the problem that the Pistons have had is that their four position is pretty scarce, um, and it's going to kind of stay that way. Uh, Isaiah Stewart and Marvin Bagley should be enough if they're yeah. healthy. Yeah. Should be. But ah, that's another story for another day. Um, but, yeah, the Pistons going to get to see their, their young lineup. Um, they are starting Asar Thompson, which is cool to see. So we're going to have Cade, Jaden, Asar, Jalen Duran, and Isaiah Stewart, which is going to be really cool to see because it's all the young guys. I don't care for beef stew, but you know, he, now that he's developed a three point shot, I can respect it I, because he, he does everything else on the court that you need. The I dirty don't, work. I just don't know if I believe that he has a three point shot. I, I like it. I like his jumper. Yeah. Okay. We'll see how reliable it is. We'll yeah, see. that's that's my biggest concern always when but, these like defensive guys start to learn threes. I don't know. I have one thing that I'd like to see that I don't know if it's going to happen, but a friend of mine thought of the idea, and I, I was completely against it at first. 
How do you feel about Jaden Ivey six man when everybody gets healthy? And so, I, I say this because it I instantly got into it after watching videos of Manu Ginobili mm-hmm. and re- remembering what he did for the Spurs. Having the stars starting, you got Tony and Tim mm-hmm. and, ro- and the rest of the role players, Bruce Bowen and those guys in the starting five. Yeah. And when things start getting slow, people start to stop scoring. You brought in Manu, mm-hmm. and he – Always took over games whenever you threw him in off the bench. Yeah. I think Jaden Ivey would be absolutely perfect in that role. Mm. But for now, he's going to start. So what I would, think he would be an excellent six What man. would be your proposed starting lineup in this scenario? Cade, Alec Burks, Asar, Isaiah Stewart, and Jalen Duran. Yeah. When healthy, it would be Bojan at the three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jaden Ivey and Asar off the bench. But since Asar has to play now, Asar starting. Yeah, Alec Burke's starting at the two. He's steady. He's a veteran. He can, he can give you production yeah. on both sides. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. I don't hate it. Um, Throw Jaden out there and just let him did. I think yeah, the hardest. Slasher. I think the hardest part is finding a guy that's willing to buy into that role because you don't see it all too often. Yeah. Um, what the, what happened with the Spurs was extremely rare. Manu right. was a superstar on pretty much every other team in the league. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it with like Lou Williams, Jamal Crawford, but those are like three of the best six men of all time. Yeah. Are we saying that Jaden Ivey is going to be could be one of the best six men of all time? It it's because, because of his see. level of talent, I think it it wouldn't be hard. Yeah. But yeah, it would have to be a thing of committing to it. Mm-hmm. Understanding that you are the superstar of the second team. Right. And that you basically but, yeah. play starter minutes. Um, yeah, that that Manu thing is extremely rare and hasn't happened many times where a borderline superstar player mm-hmm. accepts the sixth man role. Yeah. Even though we don't know if Jaden Ivey will be that great, but he clearly has the athleticism in the game to mm-hmm. go to another level. I'm trying to think of like who else would be on that second unit then. Yeah. Uh, this is this is if healthy. Cause it you'd, could, have, you'd have Monte, you'd have Jaden Ivey, mm-hmm. you'd have Isaiah Livers. Yeah. Yeah, Marvin Bagley. Like you, you've got guys or Killian. No, keep listen. Killian they're gonna there. they're gonna keep playing Killian. I'm ready to give healthy Mar- healthy Monte Morris is is the backup. I'm ready guard. to give Marcus Sasser more time. So am I. But uh, I agree, <laughs> he is a bucket. So I think that becomes the hard part is figuring out that second lineup, and then, I mean, if I I would think that if that's what you want to do, if you want to put Jaden in that six man role, I think. As long as we have Bojan, I think you have to put Asar in that second lineup with Jaden Ivey yeah. for defensive purposes. Because otherwise, because otherwise you're going to get guys that aren't known for their defense. Like you said, like guys like Isaiah Livers, potentially Joe Harris, depending on well, where he Isaiah falls. Isaiah Livers can defend some. Yeah, even though he's had some injuries and he mm-hmm. might slow down a bit, but right. three and D guy is kind of like his prototype. Yeah, but I think you want him to be more focused on the offense. I guess. Um, in that second unit, I don't know. It, it's it's definitely an interesting point. Um, I'm not I'm not sure where I feel about it just yet. I guess once we get going and see kind of how the rotation works out, um, I might be more inclined to think of it. But yeah. I don't think it's a terrible idea. I th- I think maybe the only way he would agree to it is if you came to him and like we want you to be Manu Ginobili. Yeah. Which every, everybody respects him and knows how great he was. Mm-hmm. So that it would be something to think about, but I think he would – it would take some time. It but, also yeah. might put more pressure on Cade to handle the starting unit, which I know he can do. Um, but having a guy like Ivy, then you can also use Cade in off-ball roles and things like that. And you can kind of use the two of them dynamically a little bit more, in my opinion. But it, it all depends. We'll have to kind of wait and see, I would say. Um. Other than that, that's pretty much it with the NBA. Like I said, most of the games are tonight, and we'll get to see everybody. Um, Giannis did ex- uh, get his big extension. Yeah, it's only three years, but he, it's one hundred eighty-seven. He, he threatened them. They made the trade, yeah. and he agree- finally agreed to extend. Yeah, so he's got one hundred eighty-seven million for three more three more years, and we'll see what he can do with that. And we won't see him and Damian Lillard until Thursday, I believe. Uh, is their first game. So that'll be the long awaited um, start to their season. 
Okay, moving on to college football. There wasn't too much going on. Um, a few a few top teams had some weird games coming yeah. off of bye weeks. Yeah, North Texas, Carolina uh, stumbled, stumbled uh, big time. They Well, they lost. Yeah. They just got embarrassed. North Carolina once again mm-hmm. uh, drops a game that they shouldn't have. Yeah. Uh, Sam Howell and Drake May back-to-back like generational North Carolina prospects, and they've wasted both of them pretty much. Yeah. Sucks if you're a North Carolina fan. Mm-hmm. But Texas barely beat Houston. Oklahoma barely beat UCF. And, uh, yeah, besides that, the yeah, the big game was Ohio State, Penn State. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the uh, Michigan-Michigan State game happened and ended quickly. Yeah. Uh, Michigan blew out Michigan State. Um, Michigan State put up a big old zero against Michigan. So uh, that just tells you, like we said, Michigan State's season is over. Um, Penn State, Ohio State. What do you what do you take away from that game? Ohio State taking down Penn State. Uh, my my main takeaway is first of all, James Franklin might be a fraud. He might be stealing money from Penn State. He can never win the big game. He can't. He's one in something against top twenty, top ten teams. He's like oh and ten. It, it's some absurd numbers. Mm-hmm. He can't win a big game. He hasn't been. He hasn't proven he can do it. Yeah. This was finally supposed to be the team where everything came together. Mm-hmm. Receivers couldn't get open, and Drew Aller and Toe couldn't do anything really. This was his first like major game as a college quarterback, and. He got no help from the offense, really. A lot of people were blaming him, and mm-hmm. I, I just don't. When you're when your receivers aren't getting separation, and you're just in the pocket, and he's not really a scrambler, I don't know what people expected him to do. Yeah. So he ended with the ugly uh, stat line, but yeah, the Penn State's offense just doesn't have juice right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, both teams have really good defenses. Ohio State's defense is a little bit better. They have a defense to make the playoff. But I still don't fully believe in their offense. The run game was once again average to below average. Mm-hmm. Marvin Marvin Harrison is saving the day. Yeah, their their defense is so good that all they need is a few Marvin Harrison big plays and a few big chunk plays in other areas to get down to the red zone and either like kick field goals or just get a touchdown every now and then. Right. But the explosion overall just isn't there for Ohio State. Mm-hmm. They're relying on defense majorly for the first time in in some years. Yeah, I don't see either of these team beating Michigan teams beating Michigan right now. Penn State having a home field advantage might help. Mm-hmm. I I just don't see Ohio State beating Michigan in Ann Arbor at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah, obviously things could still change, but there's only a few weeks left. Right. Michigan is about to have a bye week. They play Purdue at home, and then begins the stretch. Penn State, Maryland, Ohio State. Yeah. My microphone. Oh wow. <laughs> Try to switch it. Oh. Oh, there we go. Wait. Okay. <laughs> if it goes out, I'm gonna pull the other okay, one and yeah. uh, a little out. bit of technical difficulties, but we're good. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, I I don't have full belief in Ohio State yet, but their defense is good enough to get them to the playoff again. Yeah. And Penn State just yeah once again couldn't get it done. Right. And I would say too, like if if Michigan Ohio State gets in a slow paced game, that definitely gives the advantage to Michigan. I would yeah. say because that's kind of the way they want to play, um, even though they prove they can they can put up points a little bit more. And I think for the first time, I I don't know how long it's been. I think Michigan has the quarterback advantage in both matchups. Mm-hmm. If you throw pressure at JJ McCarthy, he can run around and make a play. Yeah, he can move. He can uh, break away from a pass rusher. Make a move, run around, and then find an open receiver. Mm-hmm. He's proven he can do it this season against the lower competition, but he's one of the only quarterbacks in that group that's shown he can move around and get it done. Yeah. Um, before we get to the last topic, um, because we're going to go short on college football, because there's not a ton to go off of, um, and there's not too many crazy games this week, and we'll kind of recap them later. I do want to shout out, they did it. James Madison... Top twenty-five. Round of applause, people. <laughs> Number Dukes, twenty-five. You, they, the NCAA has to 
respect them. Mm-hmm. They have to pay attention. And if they win their conference and they don't get a chance for let alone a bowl game, but they, they should get a chance for a new year's six spot. Yeah. If they go undefeated because mm. they just been burying everybody. Yeah. Especially now. If I mean, it seemed like nothing at the time and for a while and they only did it by one, but they beat Virginia who just beat North Carolina. Yeah. I'm not saying you can compare the two, it, it the means two teams a little bit necessarily, of something. but it means a little bit of something. Right. There's something there. Um, they do have one more kind of big game against Georgia State. Georgia State six and one in their yeah. conference, so maybe that's like their final bigger win. But uh, congrats uh, to James Madison for making top twenty five. It's pretty cool to see. Um, and finally, we got to talk about Michigan. Unfortunately, can I'm, I can I make a few notes before we get to the big controversy? Okay, yeah. So USC frauds, like always. Caleb Williams just get ready for the NFL. Which speaking of which. Caleb Williams is still projected to be like the number one quarterback off the board. Yeah. And I would say Chicago, you know, has a good chance of being one of those top picks. Chicago has Tyson Badgett now. Okay. Why go for Caleb okay. Williams? Okay. D2 quarterback. I hate that people are saying that Tyson Badgett is better than Justin Fields right now. Uh, that's ridiculous, um, obviously. But, so, I saw somebody do like a mock draft, and they're talking about the Chicago Bears. So, the Bears could have potentially two top five picks. If that happens, and especially if Chicago has the number one overall pick, tell me why Chicago should take Caleb Williams over Marvin Harrison Jr. Why they should take Caleb Williams first? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think taking a receiver first is just what I had. That hasn't happened since Keyshawn Johnson. Mm-hmm. That, I was, I believe, that was ninety four, ninety five. And that hasn't happened many times in NFL history. Yeah. Keyshawn was a good Pro Bowl receiver, but he never lived up to being the number one pick. Right. Marvin, Marvin Harrison looks like a generational talent. Right. People are comparing him to a lesser version of Calvin Johnson just because. But in the Bears organization that doesn't know how to use much of anything. Yeah. If you don't go quarterback first and you just go with Marvin first, mm-hmm. like Justin Fields and and uh, DJ uh, more DJ Moore look like they have good chemistry right now, but they had one big game, and outside of that, what else have they done? Yeah. So I I don't know if I could trust that. Okay, my point being, do you think at this point that Caleb Williams is still that much better than the other quarterbacks in this draft class? Honestly, I don't think he's that much better than Drake May. That's my now, reasoning. He's. He is doing a lot of what Pat Mahomes had to do at Texas Tech, which is do everything. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times the running game is going to fail, the O-line isn't very good, and the defense is bad. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what Pat Mahomes had to deal with at Texas Tech. He had an offensive-minded coach that didn't care much about defense in Cliff Kingsbury, and Caleb Williams has an offensive-minded coach that doesn't care much about defense in Lincoln Riley. Mm -hmm. So the similarities are there. Mm Mm-hmm. I understand them taking the, him with the first pick because it's basically like the same thing Pat Mahomes was in college. Yeah. But I think Drake May is extremely talented also, and he could be an even better fit for the NFL because what are the odds of Pat Mahomes happening twice? Right. What are those odds? Mm-hmm. And I've heard a lot of people say that Drake May is more of a system quarterback, which is kind of what the Bears have always had, and he might just fit into their system better. <laughs> and you give I don't him, know what the Chicago system even I is. Don't, yeah. That's, uh, that's another thing. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, but, then, just a mess. but then you give Drake May, Marvin Harrison Jr., that would help along with DJ Moore. Yeah. Whereas I feel like there's a chance, depending on where that second pick for the Bears falls. Now, if they have one and two, obviously you take Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. But if they fall to like four or five, maybe even three, then like Marvin Harrison Jr. could get taken. So I don't know. To me, it's just interesting. Uh, thing that i thought of but sorry to to sidetrack us yeah just, i'm just gonna hurry up so we can yeah, get to the real thing air force yeah undefeated top 20 team congratulations to the falcons yeah uh missouri up to number 16 they go to georgia this weekend yeah it could be fun they most likely don't win but if they pull it off this upset mm-hmm. oh boy yeah things would get very interesting 
in the down SEC this year. Yeah. And uh, Alabama's just still here. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. Hanging around. How, like, this is the worst, war, quote unquote, worst team mm-hmm. they've had in years. And they're, they're just winning games. Yeah. Like, barely beat Arkansas. It is what it is. Got past Tennessee. T- Tennessee goes up 13 nothing. We still beat them 34 to 20. Mm-hmm. They're they're just they're just winning games. Yeah. Not nothing impressive. Mm-hmm. Nothing to write home about. But they're just undefeated in the, and in the top 10. Yeah. The thing the thing that stinks is that they have to like they're just kind of waiting around so that if somebody else yeah. makes a mistake, they'll they'll just slide in. They could pounce. Yeah. It's pretty strange, but yeah. Let's let's get to what everybody wants to hear about. All right, Michigan is Michigan football has been in the news a little bit lately, just a little bit, and uh, it's not for anything good. Uh, they have been accused of sign stealing, and not just sign stealing. They've been going, uh, having a Michigan employee go to other stadiums, yeah. uh, a quote unquote low level staffer, yes, and scouting with uh, I guess video recording software of some sort and filming. Uh, their signs and stuff, which is against the rules. I will not act like I know a whole lot about these rules because they're very specific. We, we literally like just looked at them before this started. Yeah, they're a little bit convoluted. Um, obviously, sign stealing is not against the rules because coaches are holding up big old boards yeah. on the sideline. So if you can figure out the signs, it's really no big deal. The problem is when you go to other teams, scout their facilities or whatever, go to other games, uh, video record their signs to be able to maybe learn them a lot faster. That's when the problem uh, occurs. Um, to me, I don't want to. I don't necessarily want to downplay the situation because obviously it's it's grimy. It's uh, it's just a bad look in general. Um, we know like the Houston Astros in the World Series were known for it for, and they got you know a little. Uh, smack on the wrist and then everybody forgot about it it feels like so i mean some people still hate the astros um just for that reason but at the same time you know life moves on and people forget about it and the astros have been a completely good baseball organization for multiple years now since they've won that title um and on the same side michigan their football team has been good for a couple years now and the big argument is that, you know, everybody does it. The NCAA, we've said it many times, is very scummy. It's just, it's not a great organization. They things, enforce rules when they feel like it. Things go on all the time. Um, if you listen to a lot of the coaches' interviews this week, they talked about sign stealing is a very common thing. Uh, Matt Rule came out and said, this is why we need mics in the helmets. He said he doesn't understand that high school, and the good point that I think he made, High school football uses technology on their sidelines all the time. They do all sorts of stuff. We're at every Lake Orion game. They have tons of video boards, replay boards, um, just on their sidelines, headsets up top. NFL, quarterback has a mic connected to the coach. They can talk. Make uh, your plays so much easier that you don't have to hold up these big old boards. For some reason, college is just stuck in their ways, and they don't do it. Um, Now, that's not excusing Michigan from, you know, like I said, stealing the signs, like scouting them in person, videotaping and stuff like that. Um, But they wouldn't like you wouldn't have to worry about that if you would allow college football to have that technology. You don't then you just it's it's just not there. It it doesn't happen. Um, So to me, it doesn't it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, And to be honest, like at least in this season, it seems like Michigan would have beaten everybody that they faced. We always talk about Michigan has like the easiest schedule in college football this year. So I don't know if it changes anything. And that's, again, that's not something to be like, oh yeah, because they didn't play anybody, it doesn't matter. It's That's where it's hard for me to like figure out exactly how I feel about it. But at, at the end of the day, it just seems, it just seems dumb overall. It's similar to the Michigan State situation in a way that, like, Mel Tucker was just dumb. Michigan is just being dumb. And at the end of the day, I don't think it it fully mattered. Like, this team is what they are without that. And it just just makes it bad optics, I guess. Uh, So, I don't know. I'll let you go about it. I don't want to go anymore because I don't don't have a whole lot of thoughts on it overall. I'll start this by saying... 
I agree that it is bad optics. In many ways, yes, it's cheating. And at the end of this investigation, Michigan may need to vacate some wins. Maybe it's possible. Mm-hmm. Going to other stadiums, recording signs. That's that's something that most people frown upon. Mm-hmm. And I could understand why. And uh, I don't care. I wouldn't care if Ohio State did it. I wouldn't care if Michigan State did it. College football has been open season for over 50 years. Mm-hmm. 50 plus years. Everything has been on the table. It was just, well, everything, it used to be under the table. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people nowadays say, I don't like it because it's in my face now. I liked it when it was behind closed doors. Either way, it's cheating. Teams have been cheating. Teams have been stealing signs. Teams have been doing dirty stuff. This has been a part of a part of college athletics and college sports and college programs mm-hmm. for years. For as long as we've been alive and even more time. Teams have been doing whatever they can to get an advantage. Mm-hmm. And I just do, it doesn't make me feel any type of way. I don't understand the certain analysts and journalists in college football, certain fan bases that are like, you know, if you don't take this seriously, you don't understand college football and you don't love this sport. Stop it. Shut up. Stop it. I love college football more than most people. I am obsessive. I am a college football sicko. I watch it every week during the fall. I can't get enough of it even with all the changes that are disgusting and somewhat ruining the sport. Yeah. I'm down for college football forever. Mm -hmm. And I just do not care about this type of stuff, especially when it comes to the NCAA who I don't care about their rules because they also barely care. They just enforce them whenever they feel like it. Mm -hmm. Only once somebody makes it blatantly obvious that they did something. And it's like, Oh, we have to do something about this because otherwise People are going to know. No, I, I don't know if Jim Harbaugh was fully aware that all the, that all of this was happening, mm-hmm. that he was buying tickets to other games and getting videos of, of signs. I yeah. don't know if Jim Harbaugh mm-hmm. was fully aware of all of this. Until the investigation is over, I don't know if we'll have all the details. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I don't think it matters that much. <clears throat> to what I think Michigan would have done what they've done in the past two years no matter what. Yeah. There was going to be a time when Michigan broke through and got back at Ohio State. There are people saying it was it's impossible for Michigan to do what they've done in the past two years. Yeah. Nobody does this. Mm-hmm. There used to be a term called Clemsoning, Joey. Do you remember <laughs> when the people used to use that term? <laughs> no. So when D- Dabo Swinney's first five, six years at Clemson, mm-hmm. they couldn't get over the hump. They couldn't beat Florida State. <clears throat> they weren't winning the ACC. People were saying Cle- Clemson doesn't get over the hump. They mm-hmm. get to a big game and they get smacked or they get embarrassed. This is what happens to Clemson. They can't get over the hump. Yeah. And then it happened. It just happened. Mm-hmm. He got the right athletes. He got the right quarterbacks. He had the right coaches and everything just clicked. Everything hit into a groove and two national championships later, Clemson was looked at as one of the top three programs in the country almost. Yeah. These things happen. Mm -hmm. And for a program like Michigan, who's a historical program, who has won before and had their ups and downs, things like this happen Mm -hmm. to top programs. You have your ups. You have your downs. Florida State in the 90s up. Florida State in the 2000s up and down. Florida State wins one in 2013. They go back into the dumps for five years, and now they're back into playoff contention. Mm-hmm. These, I, I don't understand how people think that it's impossible. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh had to fix things at Michigan. Like, things were not in a good place when he got back here. <clears throat> and, yeah, they won 10 games when he first got back. Things, he had to get new, to, to bring in, like, better players, better coaches, He's had to reinvent Michigan at least like once or twice since he's gotten here. And things just hit a groove. Things clicked. This happens in college football. I don't care about the sign stealing. 
okay, it may have helped. Yeah. But guess what? When you line up against Penn State and you line up against Ohio State, you have to make plays. Mm -hmm. And you have to get it done. And they've gotten it done. Yeah. (laughs) That's what happened. Right. That's what I'd be curious about the investigation and something we talked about uh, before we started the show today. That, like, at the end of the day, like you're saying, you have to make a play. And I'd be curious if the investigation kind of figures this out or if there's a, a way to go back and look at it. But, like, how often... Do you see Michigan like audibling at the line because they have the wrong sign or they're, you know, they're like, oh, they're they're going to do this on defense or they're going to do this on offense because it would have to be pretty notice- noticeable yes. to see like a defense audible. Like I would assume fairly often that they're in the wrong defense or something like that. Now, offense is a little bit easier to audible out of the play um, because you can do a bunch of different plays from, you know, one set. But defense is a little bit different, um, especially if you know that like you're in zone and they're about to go a play that is a zone beater and you'd have to switch to man pretty quickly. That it's not as easy per se. So I, I'd just be curious to see how that how that looks or anything. Um, and the the weird thing for me um, is like you have to be able to react on a dime to where. You notice they're putting up this specific sign. You look at your little pamphlet that I'll just call a cheater book because, you know, that would make people happy. Um, (laughs) You pull up your cheater book and you say, oh, man, they're going to do this play. We got to do this. And then you have to relay it through your signs because, again, there's no mic in the helmet. And you have to say to your defensive guys, hey, they're doing this. We got to do that. And that's all like quick hitters uh, because the play clock's running down and then by the time that we say, oh, they're doing this, we got to change to this, they might snap the ball. So to me, it's like, there's such a fine line with this. And that's why it's, I feel like it's a hot topic lately because it's just, it's one of those ones that like, if your team's doing it, you're probably not as upset about it. If the team against you is doing it, you're definitely going to be upset about it. And I think you have a, a somewhat of a right to be. Um, especially like if this happened, like, if Michigan had a better schedule, I think it would be even more meaningful because then, like, you might have this close game with this big, uh, like, if Penn State game, if that was moved up closer in the season or something, and you know, they didn't have time to potentially change their signs. There was even talk that Michigan State didn't want to play the game because of this. I, I had heard that there was like a, a thing that like stupid. Michigan State thought about it and then they're like, no, Listen, we're going to play this game. The, Kaden Hauser and the coordinator were meeting like on the field mm-hmm. and he was whispering and Kaden. Yeah. It didn't matter. Right. It didn't matter. Michigan yeah. was going to destroy them. It's, right. So that's why I said, I think it's good that they're doing this now or they're getting caught now so that then when they get to their meaningful games, these teams can change their signs if they want to. They can... They can figure out how to go around this. So then we shouldn't have that controversy. Now, it's going to be brought up no matter what because people are just going to be spectacle, uh, speculating. But realistically, you can change your signs and just be like, okay, we're changing. We're flipping them. Man is going to be zone and zone is going to be man or something like that. Um, but I don't know. It, it's such a weird topic. Um, like I said, I don't know how to feel about it. But Is there anything else you wanted to add before we get to our picks? I just want Michigan to go undefeated hmm. from this point on. So you want them to get a national to, championship with an asterisk, huh? I mean, if you they've they've eliminated the they've played an easy schedule. Mm-hmm. They've eliminated the guy that that steals signs. Yeah, you got Penn State and Ohio State left. Mm-hmm. The sign stealer is gone. Who should win? Yeah. Well, he's just gonna give all the information. Oh to yeah! His, oh yeah! Oh yeah! To his boys. I forgot. It's it's a vast agency of spies. I well, forgot yeah. about it. It can't that. just yeah. be well. Realistically, it can't just be one person. There's it goes no way. deep. It goes deep. Well, to a certain point, it does kind of have to. <laughs> like, honestly, yeah. being seriously, it can't be just one guy that, you know, is a lower and higher of the team. But, um, yeah, it, it's it's wild. The one thing I will say, though, Mike Maloney pointed out on 97.1 that it's very similar to Barry Bonds. And the whole issue with Barry Bonds is he broke all these records, home runs and all. And he has an asterisk because he used steroids. But he was already great. But many people yeah. believe he would have just been just as good. He was a Hall of Famer before the steroids. Right. That he would have, yes, his numbers might have been lesser, um, but he was just as good of a player without the steroids. Yeah. It's kind of like that for Michigan. Like, 
they are a good team. They are a championship contender this season. It just puts a damper on their season slightly. So, who knows? Some people will love it. Some people will hate it. Okay, moving on to the NFL. Let's have some fun. We got 20 minutes left. So, we got to save some time for the Lions to talk about. Um, It was another rough week, I believe. For who? For me. Oh, boy. Uh, So, you had eight correct picks. Let's go. And this was a wild week for in general, just picking across the board, not just between us. How many us. games did you win? I had all. I had eight. Wins. You had eight. I had four. <laughs> because we had that, a lot. That might be one of the worst yeah. individual weeks one of us has had. Because this that was, is crazy. This was one of the big weeks where we hardly had any of the same yeah. picks. Um, and a lot of people around, just like I, listening to like betting podcasts and things, people said this was one of the hardest weeks of just picking games in general. Well, yeah, well, when the Patriots beat the Bills. Yeah. And yeah. Um I still hate you for taking the Ravens over the Lions. Um I forgot I did. <laughs> Honestly, I forgot. The, the Colts were looking good for most of the game and that game was crazy in the last few minutes. Yeah. We both got uh New England wrong. I got the Giants over Washington, which was weird. You trusted Tyrod and I I did. I apologize. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I had to go with my guy. Yeah. Um Chicago Las Vegas was a weird game. Who did I pick? You picked Chicago. <laughs> well, I can't even remember why I picked Chicago. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I can't remember. Brian Hoyer looked like Brian Hoyer again after he looked great in his first game back. Um, I got the Atlanta game. You got Pittsburgh over LA. That Pittsburgh Pittsburgh is a weird team. How do they keep I don't know winning? What they are. I don't know. How do they keep winning games? I, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Make There's it make no sense. Denver beating Green Bay? <laughs> Green Bay looked awful. Listen. They looked terrible. I, they, I, I figured in this type of game where both teams are just – they're just silly teams. Yeah. So like, I was like, Denver might as well just win this game. So I talked about <laughs> it with Marie on the Fantasy Football Podcast yesterday. I played Jordan Love, Luke Musgrave, and Christian Watson in my big money fantasy league because I have Lamar Jackson. And I said – I don't want to play Lamar Jackson against the Lions because I'll feel bad. I felt worse because he went off on my bench in fantasy. <laughs> yeah. And so I've learned the lesson that, you know, a you lot of people— got to separate fantasy from a, your— A lot yeah, of people are like, family. oh, you, should, you shouldn't, like, cheer for your fantasy players when they're playing your team. But my thought now is I went to Jordan Love, he played terrible, and the Lions lost. Yeah. So it's double losing. I would rather go into it, play— Lamar Jackson, because if he plays well and the Lions lose, then at least I won in my fantasy league. On the opposite spectrum, if the Lions go in and beat the Ravens and Lamar Jackson does terrible, then okay, my fantasy team lost, but the Lions are now seven and one. Yeah. So like that's like a a win win scenario where like, you know, I'm gonna be able to make that up. So from this point on, I'm gonna go with that logic. Super annoying. Anyway. So I kind of just I hate Green Bay even more right now. Um I picked the Chargers again. I'm I need help. I, I need help. I can't pick the Chargers. We talked about this at the beginning of the season, Joey. I, I asked you why. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I asked you. Uh they were they get they got Austin Eckler back. I thought they were gonna be okay. And I did it get meant nothing. I did get Philly correct. Looks like Miami, they they, they may just not be a playoff team. They're struggling against good teams. And Minnesota on Monday night. What the what the heck? Jordan Addison just gave it to him. Christian McCaffrey was back, and San Francisco yeah. looked lost. I, I don't get it. It's wild. Listen, dude, George Kittle gave me a few fantasy points, so I don't care. <laughs> yeah. So onwards and upwards to uh, to week eight. Uh, Thursday night football is Tampa Bay at Buffalo. I can't pick Tampa Bay. It's at Buffalo. Buffalo just lost again to New England. They have to have one of those revenge tour type games. I uh, yeah, I also agree. Buffalo bounces back. This is the type of game where yeah, their offense looks unstoppable. Yeah, uh, we got the Rams at the Cowboys. This is at Dallas. I I can't trust Matthew Stafford to be this honest. This would be the funniest game for the Cowboys to lose. Yeah. Oh my God. I could see it happening, but I don't know. I I can't trust. Like Matthew Stafford is just he's such an enigma. He is. Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup, he makes them look great, and then he throws a pick or something like that, and just give me the Rams. Hurts the team. 
Okay. Yeah. The, yeah, this is one that feels like it could bite me in the butt, but I'm going to take Dallas. Minnesota, Green Bay. I don't want to take either this of these teams. Disgust. I'm going to take Minnesota just because Jordan Addison is balling. <sighs> just because and I, Kirk Cousins is better. I don't want to take Green Bay. I'll take Green yeah. Bay because of their defense, not because okay. of their offense. All right. That's all. Good uh, pick. <laughs> Atlanta at Tennessee. Bijan Robinson. I'm waiting for Atlanta to Listen, get fined. I heard Bijan was, wasn't feeling well. I yeah. think that's what Arthur Smith said. Mm-hmm. But they never reported the illness. Did you hear that? So a lot of people think that Atlanta should be fine because they never reported it, and he only played like a few snaps. Yeah. I heard some people saying it was a rumor. Bijan said something crazy to Arthur Smith. I don't. Nobody knows yeah. what happened. Then there was later like he wasn't feeling himself. I heard headaches. I, I don't know. And Tennessee, they're talking about uh, moving on. They're they're talking about uh, trading DeAndre Hopkins, trading Derrick Henry. They're expecting Will Levis to start this week. You mean the Falcons? I'm going with Tennessee. I know that's crazy. You're you're taking Will Levis. This is like one of those Tennessee type games. You're taking the Mayo man. That's what you're doing. This is going to be the most boring game of the week. You know that, right? Two run first offenses. Pretty quality defenses. I wish you good luck on that one, sir. I okay. wish you good luck. Yeah, I, I might need it. Uh, New Orleans at Indianapolis. New Orleans sucks. <laughs> They've looked bad. New Chris, Orleans sucks. Chris Olave is in the handcuffs right now. Oh, man. Well, actually, he's in a jail cell, so. I uh, I don't know if he's been released yet. I don't know what they do. He was I caught speeding, uh, going 70 and a 35. Come on, man. Maybe they went with Jameis. I, I, does he add it? I don't know. I don't know. Indianapolis. Yeah. They should have won last week. They played tough. I, I like them a lot. I like the Colts. I, the problem is I'm starting to get that pressure of feeling like I need to start making <laughs> ground in picks. You might need to play it safe just so you can stay afloat. Because if you <sighs> maybe you have another terrible week. Yeah, it could be over. There could be some separation. could be over. There's a lot of time left. New Orleans just has a good defense, though, and I feel like that can always keep them afloat. But they suck, but They though. look so bad. You're right. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, Indy. Watch us both lose that game. Yeah, that'll be it. New England at Miami. New England just... I don't know. They played well. New England played well. Mac Jones had his first like clutch game winner. Mm -hmm. Miami. Yeah. Dolphins all the way. I mean, it'll be they they New England knows how to slow Miami down. Uh, If this was in New England, I might take the Patriots, but it being in Miami. Well, we already saw that matchup, and uh, that was Tyreek Hill's worst game. So like they know how to scheme against him, but they're just not good enough to to beat them in the end. Uh. Oh, the Battle of New York. Jets at Giants. This is for Chris. J-E-T-S. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't think Tyrod's starting. I think Daniel Jones is supposed to be oh, back. Oh, man. Um, but I feel like the Giants got a little juice in them. And maybe, just maybe, they'll let Tyrod That's keep starting. Good good 14-point division win. That'll, that'll get the blood flowing. Yeah. That'll get it done. I'll go for the Giants, though. Uh, Jacksonville at Pittsburgh. These are this is a strange two game. wild teams that I don't understand. Jacksonville at Pittsburgh. Calvin Ridley's falling off the map. They're five and two. Pittsburgh's run run game is just non-existent. Travis Etienne is so good. Yeah, he's played he really is, good this yeah. year. Christian Kirk is having a good seat. George Pickens is starting to pick it up. I'm, I'm weighing the pros and the cons, man. Deontay Johnson is back. I'm starting George Pickens and well, I think I'm starting him at my flex in fantasy. <laughs> but I, but Travis Etienne is must. I'm taking the Jaguars. <laughs> okay. Yeah, taking the Jags. I'll take Pittsburgh. I'll go for home field advantage on this one. Maybe it works out. Philadelphia at Washington. Now the last time these guys played, Washington hang hung with them until the very end. Washington is just hit or miss. They're a mess. It's been more missed than hit lately. They're a mess in my opinion. Philly. Yeah. I think they need a new coach. Yeah, I, I agree. They also are talking about cleaning house. Well, uh, Jonathan yeah. Allen was very upset with this team. Oh. He, I loved it. Bring him to Detroit. I love those types of energy. Yes. Bring him to Detroit. I agree. Uh, the number one and number two overall pick, Houston at Carolina. CJ Stroud taking on Bryce Young. Houston. Houston. I'm not even thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. It, it should be more exciting, but the Panthers are just depressing to watch. Yeah, they're they're pretty. Bad. At least Houston is is fun. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're a fun young team. Yeah. Uh, Cleveland at Seattle. 
This is interesting. I think Kareem Hunt's getting the start. Jerome Ford is out. So the Cleveland somehow put up 40 points last week. P.J. Walker, is he the guy? Did you see those picks Deshaun Watson threw? Yeah. I. What What happened? Did the universe just, like, snatch his talent? <laughs> did you Did you see Brady Quinn throwing shade at Deshaun Watson? No, I don't think I'll so. I'll have to show you okay. after. But like He got into it with Deshaun Watson's trainer. <laughs> he rolled out the pocket and, like, just threw it straight to DBs. Yeah. I, something in his soul just must be broken. Because mm. that's, that's not Deshaun Watson out there. Yeah. That's a different quarterback. And then Seattle, like, Geno Smith just is has Is Philip not... Walker starting? Huh? Is Philip Walker starting? Yeah. PJ? PJ Walker? Yeah. I believe so. It's in Seattle. I guess I don't know for sure, but... Uh, it's in Seattle. It's in Seattle. They only beat Arizona 20-10. to 10. I don't know it's about... It's not impressive at all. I also don't know about uh, DK Metcalf's status at the moment, although JSN played really good, so... If it wasn't for a Jake Bobo, like, in extremely impressive touchdown catch, it would have been 13-10. to 10. Yeah. Brown's defense is really good. Miles Garrett has the most sacks through like whatever year he's in in his career. In well, in that career. game against the Colts, he has eighty-two sacks. In that game against the Colts, he had two sacks, like two tip balls, a blocked kick, There's something else, like a bunch of crap. You mean the Browns? Okay, yeah, go uh, Cleveland. I'm gonna go Seattle. I'm gonna go for the home field advantage again. I'm picking the Browns and the Jets. Why am I just going with Chris I right know. now? I don't know what's happening. I can't go with Chris because of his awful NBA takes. <laughs> uh, Kansas City at Denver. Fun one. Uh, Denver hasn't beaten Kansas City in like seven years. Yeah. It's pretty bad. I, I It is unbelievable. It's like Lo- Detroit Lions type stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like the Lions against, uh, well, never mind. And they're, the Ravens. Ra- they're 6-1, and one, I guess. Against the Broncos them. are about to lose again. That's that's depressing. Mm-hmm. I heard I don't know if it's true or not, but I saw some like little article that <laughs> Sean Payton said that he would trade Russell Wilson if he could. He didn't say that. I don't think so either. <laughs> but it's it it was one of those it's, funny. Yeah, it's hilarious. Uh, Baltimore, Arizona, battle of the birds. <laughs> Baltimore. After what Baltimore did to the Lions last week, got a ride. Um, Arizona will get Kyler Murray back, hopefully in a couple weeks. So that'll be interesting to see. Uh, Cincinnati at San Francisco. Cincinnati coming off their bye. San Francisco. San Francisco, I don't believe they're this weird team that they've played like. I think they're still just really good. Yeah. I'm going with San Francisco. I agree. I think they they have a bounce back, and they're going to love going after Joe Burrow. Sunday night football. How is this Sunday night football? Chicago at the Chargers. Tyson Bajan taking on the Chargers. If the Chargers lose this game, Brandon Staley must Can I pick first? be fired. Yes. Give me the Chicago Bears. I knew it. Matty Berflus is about to beat Brandon Staley in LA. I'm taking the Chargers Tyson for the Bajan. I'm taking the Chargers for the last time. And if the Chargers <laughs> do not announce Brandon Staley's firing immediately after the game, if they lose. Are they going to be dead to you? They are dead like to Like they're me. dead to everybody else already? Immediately dead. Immediately. They cannot lose this game. Wow. I, yeah. Crazy. Uh, and Monday night, our Detroit Lions. This game is going to be an ass kicking. It better be. Of legendary proportions. Yes. Josh McDaniels is going to make some of the dumbest decisions. Mm-hmm. The Lions are going to win this game like 45 to like 7. Oh boy, do I hope so. Jimmy G yeah. might be back, I think I heard. That doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. But. At all. Jacoby Myers can get his eight catches for 40 yards. Mm-hmm. I'm a little Listen. nervous about Devontae Adams, but uh, that's about it. I'm not worried about their quarterbacks, though, like I said. Max Crosby is a problem. Throw Brian, throw Brian Hoyer out there. Just do it. Just yeah. for fun. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Let him play in, yeah. in his home state. Why not? Good times. Um, Yeah. I want to take these last couple minutes just to talk about the Lions' loss to the Ravens. Do you take anything away from it? They lost 38-6. to Jameer Gibbs finally got his first touchdown. 
I think do you think it's just even though Jameer Gibbs scored his first touchdown, it's becoming apparent that that was probably a mistake to draft him or to drafted they didn't they move back and get those two picks in the middle of the first round? Uh yeah, they should have taken Jalen Carter. Hmm. Yeah, they they could have gotten this what they've done with Jamar Gibbs. I mean Jameer Gibbs mm-hmm. out of most other decent running backs in the NFL. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was a disappointing yeah. loss. And uh, I, just, I just don't understand what happened on defense. Yeah, it was bad like, from the jump. The receivers were wide open. Yeah. Wide open. Yeah, my brother and I were aggressively texting each other back and forth about how upset we were um, on the game. I think the biggest thing, too, that didn't make sense is, like, the Lions secondary was playing such soft coverage. And, like, the Ravens guys, like, yes, Zay Flowers has been good uh, coming out the gate as a rookie. But, like, they're not, like, world beaters from the receiving end to, like, garner that much, like, I guess, appreciation that they should be playing so soft on them. Like, just get up and press those guys. Like, OBJ is done. Like, I don't know. It, to me, it was bothersome. Obviously, the defensive line not getting home they got They got to make a move. We, we, they knew, get somebody. we knew Lamar would be a problem for them, but, like, the big one that everybody points out, giving him 10 seconds in the pocket is just unacceptable. I don't care if he's Michael Vick or what. Uh, it's it's wild. Yeah. Um, I agree. They definitely have to make a move. Now, there's been some talk that Brad Holmes and Dad, Dan Campbell said that they don't want to make a trade because of the vibes of the team. They don't want to mess anything up. That's scary talk. I hope that they're just you know doing coach speak there to try to keep their guys happy. Because I think they need to make some sort of move. Um, I don't know what the best option would be. Um, because we, we've we talked about kind of the, the like, cream of the crop that we would want. The Max Crosby's, the Pat Sertains. But we have to look more realistically of somebody that would possibly help. That's why I kind of even brought up Jonathan Allen. He's more of a veteran guy. Wouldn't probably cost as much. Something we could look at. Um I know there was a, a thing that 97.1 was talking about today about different players that might be on the trade block that the Lions could look at. The first couple that they put up were like Derrick Henry, Jerry Judy. I don't know if the offense needs a ton of help. Uh, maybe another wide receiver would be nice uh, just for a depth piece now that Marvin Jones has been released and stepped away from the team. Um, so that's a possibility. Um, but I'm still holding out hope for JMO, which... If JMO doesn't show up on Monday night against the Raiders, the clock is ticking. It could be a problem. Yeah. So we'll see. For the most part, though, I'm throwing away the Ravens game. We knew the Lions weren't going to go 16 and 1. Like I said, if they would have won that game, I would have come in as a slappy. So it's probably best that they, they lost that game. It's another one that says, hey, we're not there just yet. Um, and you get punched in the mouth. And I think that's, that's a good way that you can. Uh, Regain your confidence, have a nice bounce back, and then they can beat up on the Raiders, go into their bye week, get ready for the Chargers, and be uh, just fine if they need to. Yeah. Oh, and Jared Goff just didn't look that great either. Like, a lot of his passes were off. So, I don't know if you have anything else on the Lions, but uh, at least we get to see them in prime time on Monday night. I do believe there's a Manning cast for the game too, which is going to be fun to watch. So, Lions in prime time at home. I hope... The fans should be there in full force, which is great. So excited to see. Anything else before we uh, call it a show? Uh, no. Okay. Nothing else. The one thing I wanted to say, the Red Wings, keep an eye on them. I know we're not a hockey podcast, but they are playing really good right now. The offseason edition of Alex DeBrinkett that they got, um, he has the most goals in the NHL right now. And uh, they are... They just lost their second game. I think they're five and two or six and two or something. So, if you're interested, you might keep an eye on. Them. But this has been views from the sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. Actually, I do have one more thing. The Diamondbacks made it to a World Series before the Tigers. Good night. Diamondbacks Rangers, wild.